Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Molecular Imaging Group, as well as MRI Group, it's our honor to have the opportunity to address a such distinguished audiences through providing a valuable presentation that would enhance the clinical practices and expand the knowledge impressively in a new core physics under the topic of what's really behind the gamma camera. In reception, in order to break the ice, I would like to introduce myself briefly. I'm Arida Shehri, necromedicine technologist working at John Hopkins Aramco Healthcare, and it's a my really pleasure to be a moderator for this quite interesting webinar. Today, we are glad to invite such experience in the necromedicine field. Our speaker will be Mr. Abdullah Yami. He got his bachelor's degree in necromedicine from Indiana University of the Balenciaga, and he will start soon as an RSO from Alabama University. He's a working as a patent that related to the field of necrophysics and necromedicine as well. He's a necromedicine social influencer and passionate in several clinical practices, interested in innovation and necromedicine researches. Before we start, I would like to mention the ability of the all audiences to submit any question in QA tab and will be answered during the discussion part, inshallah. Many thanks for Mr. Abdullah for your kind invitation. And now the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Harij. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mustafa. Thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Zainab. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank both groups, uh, MRI and uh, nuclear medicine, for giving me this opportunity to uh, uh, give this great lecture. Uh, and I hope, inshallah, uh, uh, many of us will get benefits uh, after this lecture. And um, I hope some of us, inshallah, will participate. All right. So, uh, we can start now. Uh, so uh, our topic is uh, what's behind gamma camera. So I know uh, many of you have worked in gamma camera and many of you may know uh, this device, uh, but some of us uh, do not know what's inside this uh, device. So uh, let's take a trip. Let's imagine we are um, going inside the, uh, this device. And let's see what's the uh, what's gamma camera consists of. So basically, uh, uh, we have collimator, uh, we have filter that made of lead, and we have sodium iodide crystal, and we have light guides, optical cobbling, and we have PMT tube, uh, a pre amplifier, an amplifier, and a pulse height analyzer, and uh, last we have display cathode ray tube. So basically we have these uh, materials inside the gamma camera, okay? So first we have uh, um, four types of collimator. So as you can see here, we have um, first one, the parallel hole. Uh, the parallel hole is the most common collimator uh, in nuclear medicine. And it's a parallel uh, collimator. And you can see here all the um, ions or all the radiation coming off uh, from the object or the source, for example, the patient, all the radiation will come all the way like this, okay? So this is the first uh, collimator, all right? And we have a pinhole collimator. This collimator used for uh, small organs uh, such as uh, thyroid. So for example, uh, we have uh, small organs like this, we'll use the pinhole. But pinhole uh, will uh, uh, will give us a opposite image, okay? And we have diaphragm hole collimator. So this collimator is used for, uh, uh, for example, big uh, or organs such as uh, abdomen organs. Sometimes we have big patients, okay? So uh, this, uh, we have small field of view and we have big organs, so we'll use the diverging. Uh, the, the, the benefits of this uh, collimator is just uh, make the uh, organ look smaller in our image. And we have the last one, convergent hole collimator. It's the uh, opposite of the uh, divergent hole collimator. So sometimes we have small organs uh, like thyroid, 
and other organs will use a uh, conversion hole. Will uh, it will make our uh, it will make the gland or the organ uh, bigger for our picture or our image. Let's uh, see. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see our uh, filter or collimator inside. So this is basically how the collimator looks like. Okay. Uh, uh, this collimator made of lids, and we have a lot of holes here, and uh, basically made of six. Uh, yeah, yeah. angles okay so uh, this six angles called uh, hexag hexagonally uh, collimator and uh, uh, the thickness of the wall and uh, that's called septa uh, it's very good thickness and that's due to uh, reject the uh, ions or photons that come in uh, of the uh, collimator so for example we have a source or we have a patient that uh, given off some radiation. So we have, for example, we have some radiation coming all the way like this. For example, for, uh, let's say for this hole here, we have some uh, radiation coming all the way here. And it will hit this thickness, uh, this uh, wall here, and immediately, uh, due to due to the thickness of this wall, immediately it will reject the ions or the photons that coming off. So uh, this uh, collimator will accept only all the radiations that come in all the way like this, straight forward, parallel. Uh, and we also have, um, uh, we have 95% attenuation uh, and it's really sensitive um, uh, collimator. Okay. So uh, uh, we also have a scintillation detector. Uh, Second thing, it's uh, the crystal sodium iodide. So uh, the detection process first begin with a scintillation flash of lights. So as you know, the, the crystal sodium iodide is giving off some flashes, some lights, but this will not start or it will not work until any gamma rays will enter uh, or interact with this, uh, with this crystal, okay? So crystal is uh, giving off some uh, flashes, but it will not work or it will not start until the gamma rays interact with it. Okay, so this is how the crystal looks like, uh, sodium iodide crystal, and it's given some flashes, flights, okay? And also it's most common crystal in nuclear medicine. All right, uh, the crystal, as I said, plus ionization radiation, equal flashes, uh, equal flash of lights. And this process called scintillation, okay? So uh, uh, crystal plus uh, ionization radiation equal flash of lights, and this called scintillation. So uh, this is basically how gamma camera inside, how it looks. Uh, we have the collimator here, as you can see, and this is the uh, sodium iodide crystal here. And we have the PMT tubes, it's attached to the crystal sodium iodide and uh, any PMT tube is, is really close to the other one. So any gap between the uh, PMT tube that will cause uh, artifacts to our image. Okay. And then uh, these PMT tube will uh, transfer the photons to uh, electrons and then to electrical pulses. And that will uh, send it to our computer and, and will give us, uh, and, and it will display the image for us. Okay, so uh, the light is given off small sequential flashes. Uh, and then uh, it's proportional to the number of flashes. So any number that coming from the source or the patient here, immediately the crystal will, will take it as how it is. All right, and then uh, it will send it to the PMT tube here. So uh, we have two scans that the most common scans in nuclear medicine, uh, cardiac and bone scans, as you can see here, we got uh, great resolution, great images. Uh, I just wanted to share these uh, images uh, to, uh, to show you guys. So uh, the pro uh, properties of scintillations, uh, we have the conversion ratio. So basically, uh, will get some radiations or photons, and then uh, immediately it will uh, convert it to uh, electrical pulses. 
and then uh, it will send it to the computer with image for us. This is how the conversion ratio, uh, or what does conversion ratio means. Uh, and then uh, transparency, that means basically uh, changing the photons to uh, electrons, okay? And we have short scintillation duration. Uh, that basically means whenever we receive any um, photons from the patient, immediately the crystal and the PMT tube uh, will pick it, but not take a lot of time. So uh, this is what does uh, short scintillation uh, duration means. And we have high density and fireball thicknesses of the crystal. Uh, we have one over four inches, one over two inches, three uh, over eight inches. And here's some uh, great images of the crystal sizes inside these uh, devices. We have the well counter, and this is how it looks. We have uh, a crystal inside this device. And we have uptake probe. We also have a crystal inside this device. And we have the gamma camera, which is the most common used in nuclear medicine. And the crystal is supposed to be located in this area here. Okay, so uh, we have some disadvantage of the sodium iodide uh, uh, with addition of thallium. Uh, it's fragile, uh, crack easily. That means it's really sensitive. Uh, it's basically, uh, it will change the color immediately if there is any uh, crack. And also it's uh, hygroscopic, retains moisture. Um, that means uh, this crystal will keep the moisture uh, in, in the same crystal itself. And also it's really sensitive to the temperature. Uh, if, we, if we increase the, uh, the air condition, uh, or let's say if we uh, change the uh, temperature inside the room that has the crystal, immediately that will affect the crystal. And it's really expensive. It's not that uh, cheap. Uh, so that's some disadvantage of sodium iodide. So uh, what's PMT tube and what's, uh, what's going on inside the PMT tube? Uh, as you can see here, um, the definition of this uh, small device is a light sensitive device that converts scintillation into electrical pulses. So we'll get some photons and it will uh, uh, interact with the crystal and immediately this PNT tube will change it to electrical pulses in order to give us uh, uh, an image, okay? So this PNT tube contains with a photocathode in seven to 10 dynodes and one anode. And I'll explain in the second, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the second slides in details. We have uh, some different sizes and some different designs uh, of the PNT tube, as you can see here. These are, uh, all of them are uh, PNT tubes. And the PNT is composed of um, iron and nickel and uh, it's magnetic shielding. So uh, uh, it has a membrane of magnetic shielding, okay? And that's due to, uh, it's really sensitive and uh, uh, it's really, uh, what's going inside it. So we need this magnetic shield. So uh, the scintillation from crystal strikes, uh, strikes photocathode, uh, and then the electron is ejected and drawn to the first dynode due to the voltage, voltage difference. So um, when we increase the voltage, we will increase the electrons, uh, the number of electrons, okay? so. Uh, that means basically, as, uh, as long as we have good voltage, we will have good number of electrons, okay? Uh, and, uh, okay, uh, PM, uh, PMT tube uh, operation, when, when the electron hit that dynode, secondary electrons will emit it, okay? That basically means um, the first uh, photon will enter with the photocathode and will hit the dynode and it will multiply to the second dynode. I'll explain it in the, in the next slide. So uh, uh, continu uh, continuous throughout the entire PMT tube so that electrons are sufficient multiply through the process. So again, uh, 
any photon that enters with the photocathode, uh, we will receive multiplied number in, in the last dinoid or in the anode. Okay, here's uh, what's uh, inside the PNT tube and how the process works, okay? So we have the photocathode here, and this is the gate. When the photon, in, uh, when the photon enters from the gate of photocathode here, uh, all, all the electrons are um, holding uh, minus charges, okay? And so it will hit in the dynode here, and, and then again, it will go to the second dynode with a, a multiplied number. So for example, here, it will go one, and the second dynode will go two. Third dynode will go four. Fifth dynode will go eight, in Elisetra, like this. So in the last uh, dynode, will get a multiplied number. Okay, and again, uh, we will, uh, the photon here is coming as a minus charges. And again, uh, we will receive a, a, a plus charges here. Okay, and also we have the output meter and uh, we have the supply uh, power here and the focusing electrode um, here. This is basically how the PNT tube looks like inside. So uh, we have the PNT tube system of uh, proportionally. So uh, pulse height is proportional to the number of electrons at the last dynode. So uh, basically that means uh, any photons uh, that we are receiving, we will get uh, we will get the same number of electrons at the last dynode. Okay, uh, here again, number of electrons at photocathode is proportional to the light intensity of a crystal. So whenever we get from the source, any photons we are getting from the source of radiation will basically get the same uh, number at the last dynode. So we have some uh, images here uh, uh, of the PMT tube that attached to the crystal. And as you can see here, uh, there is no gap between each PMT tube. Okay. And this is another picture. This is how the um, detection uh, process inside the gamma camera. And we have the pre-amplifier. The pre-amplifier is uh, a voltage by factor of four to five times that of total uh, PNT tube amplification. So basically the pre-amplifier is located uh, in the back of the PNT tube uh, and it will uh, transfer any uh, data from the PNT tube to the amplifier, okay? Uh, and also it's match impedance of system. And that means, uh, and that means internal residence of a flaw of electrical current. So um, I'll leave this question for the audience. Why match ambience? I hope, I hope someone can answer this question in the chat. This is how the pre-amplifier uh, looks like. And we have the amplifier. Um, it further amplifies incoming uh, pulses from the pre-amplifier. Again, uh, this is connected to the pre-amplifier. So anything that uh, the pre-amplifier is holding, it will uh, immediately transfer it to the amplifier. Uh, and again, um, increases overall amplification of pulses. So that basically means we will get uh, multiple uh, uh, 1,000 1, times of, of any photons, okay? Uh, we have designed to ensure uh, amplitude of each pulses uh, that to be proportional to the energy absorbed in the crystal from gamma radiation. So basically, uh, as I said, again, any uh, radiation that we are gaining from the crystal, uh, we will receive at the end of, uh, of the amplifier. We have a high voltage power supply and the supply voltage to the PNT tube uh, pre, uh, pre uh, amplifier and amplifier. So that's basically what we need for the voltage, uh, PMT tube and pre-amplifier and amplifier. 
So uh, of course we need stable power supply and that means any changes of the supply that will affect uh, the electrons, okay? Uh, because any effect of the uh, supply, the power supply that will make some drifts uh, inside the PNT tube. This eventually will cause some uh, artifacts or any, uh, or, or will cause some issues in the picture or the image. Uh, we have unstable power that will cause drift, as I said, uh, and that basically will make some voltage uh, fluctuation. And also uh, caused by temperature changes. Uh, if, we, uh, if the temperature uh, change, that basically will change the, uh, the PMT tube process inside. Okay, uh, affects secondary emissions because the number of secondary emissions is proportional to the voltage. Uh, again, as I said, uh, all the numbers that we are receiving from the dynodes uh, will eventually come out uh, to our uh, uh, to our uh, amplifier. We have pulse high analyzer, uh, PHA. So the purpose of this uh, electrical circuit, which measure pulse amplitude produced by amplifier. Okay, and I'll explain this in the in the next slide. Yeah. So we will select pulses of particular height and we will reject others, okay? So we'll basically choose the whatever we need from the window and we'll receive whatever we need and we'll uh, reject whatever we, uh, we don't need, okay? And so uh, we have uh, a plot in the, sec in, the, in the next slides that will explain this. So basically here we have a, a, a plot that design like this. And for example, uh, let's say we have technetium that, uh, that has a one, 140 kV. So we'll have 10% uh, minus and 10% plus. That means we will select uh, the window like this of the highest peak and uh, we'll, we'll reject anything that before one, uh, 100, one, 100 to, uh, 260 and we'll, re we'll reject anything above 154, okay? So uh, PHA typically will select pulses corresponding to range that we are looking for. And this basically uh, from the energies that uh, based on the uh, uh, isotopes that we are uh, using, okay? So uh, the range of the energies is called window. So this is the window here. Uh, and the window size may vary depending on the user's need. So some uh, clinic will use uh, 5%, some clinic will use 15%, but um, most of the uh, nuclear medicine department will use 10% uh, plus or minus. So uh, the PHA spectrometer uh, is, uh, display the spectrum and it's often referred to as a spectrometer. We have two types of spectrometers. Uh, one of them single channel and the other one is multi channels analyzer. And that basically means uh, the single channel analyzer is used for, uh, let's say we have technetium that has uh, one energy, which is 140. Uh, so this contains both for uh, lower level discriminate. Uh, so any pulses below the lowest level are rejected and any uh, pulses above the number will be rejected. For example, here, if we have uh, more than 100, 155 will be rejected. If we have anything that below 126, that will be rejected. And we have uh, another type of uh, pulse high analyzer. Uh, and this pulse high analyzer is uh, chosen uh, when we have any scans uh, that uh, using more than two uh, energies. For example, we have NGN 111, uh, which has uh, three energies. So basically we'll choose uh, these, uh, uh, we'll choose this multi-channel analyzer, okay? So uh, we have the uh, window width. So as, as I said, smaller window will, will get greater resolution 
uh, if we increase, let's say, to 15% uh, of the window, that basically means we, we will get a uh, worst resolution. So we'll keep it smaller window in order to get a greater resolution. And this is uh, the end. I hope uh, I covered most of the, uh, of the things inside Gamma Camera. And uh, I hope some of you get, uh, got some benefits. Uh, Ms. Arij, uh, I don't know, should we start on the questions or? Uh... Yes, Abdullah. Um, very thanks for a valuable presentation and well organized lecture. Um, if you, any of you did, can um, ask any questions, submit here in UA tape and we'll answer it here. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdullah, for your valuable uh, presentation. And uh, it was uh, really, really summarized and great information uh, and a quick review about uh, gamma camera physics. Uh, kindly, the floor is yours now. You can send your question through chat and uh, we'll forward it directly to the speaker. So let's start with uh, question one. Do the new generation gamma camera use artificial intelligence? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I know uh, in, in, uh, in the future, uh, we, uh, they are using uh, good patents that uh, applied uh, with the intelligence. So, uh, of course, I would say yes for this question. The second question is, how does this uh, thickness and length affect the image resolution? Okay, that's another good question. Uh, so basically the septa uh, is the wall of the uh, collimator. So basically uh, if we have uh, not thick, not thick uh, wall, immediately this uh, photons will enter uh, to our uh, all, it will, uh, it will penetrate through this uh, collimator and then it will head to the crystal. And this will cause uh, some uh, photons that come in not straight. And eventually it will cause some uh, uh, bad resolution of our image. Can you please share the best uh, book uh, as a references for nuclear medicine? Uh, this is general uh, question. I would uh, leave this uh, to uh, most of you guys, Ms. Zainab, uh, Ms. Ariage, Dr. Mustafa, if any of you have uh, 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 a good reference of book, please share it with us. Because there are many good books uh, now in the market. Uh, from my side, I suggest an IEA reference for nuclear medicine and uh, the other medical imaging modalities. 
also the essential of nuclear medicine this is the basic book for any nuclear medicine specialist uh, you should study this uh, from the bachelor degree these are good uh, books uh, Zainab. i appreciate it What do we mean by full width uh, at half maximum? Uh, Mr. Ali is. Uh, is asking uh, is ask, uh, asking for a question uh, that's a good question mr ali uh, uh, what i am seeing right now uh, there are good uh, improvements in saudi arabia regarding uh, many different uh, majors so uh, inshallah in the future uh, i heard uh, we are using a good technology and good uh, we are providing many uh, good devices that uh, in this uh, in this uh, field so of course uh, we are uh, you will see this uh, future with gamma camera in, in the kingdom inshallah Many thanks, Mr. Abdullah, for answering the questions. Um, I think till now there is no um, questions in the chat. So we can, uh, let's move to, yes. Um, Mr. Abdullah, do you have any question for audience? Uh, no, I think we are good. Uh, mashallah, we, we had uh, good questions. Uh, inshallah, I hope, uh, Many of you uh, had got some benefits uh, after this lecture. Anything that you are uh, you need, uh, you can immediately contact me uh, direct via my uh, Twitter or uh, uh, my Telegram at any time. I would be uh, happy to help. Uh, sorry, doctor, for that uh, question. Um, can you write your contact information in the chat? Sure, Ms. Arish, this is my uh, Twitter and uh... I'll also add my uh, Telegram uh, user here. I appreciate your efforts. Many thanks. You are welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Abdullah. That was a really great talk. MashaAllah, well done. Uh, thanks, Zainab, and thanks, Arij. MashaAllah alaikum, well done again. Uh, it's great to see these awesome initiatives happening in the background. Uh, I'm sure, Abdullah, you know I'm not in the nuclear medicine field, otherwise I would hammer you with lots of questions, but lucky you. Uh, inshallah, in the future, we'll have maybe a, a combined session, PET, MR, or something like this. But yeah, uh, thanks a lot for all the attendees who given the t their time and mashallah, they've been patient to listen to Abdullah. He's done a really awesome job. 
Abdullah, what you just did, you did, you did the gamma camera anatomy for us, which is great. You just brought me 25 years ago. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for all audience. And uh, one message for all audience. If you think you want to talk about any topic within the imaging, please feel free. Since Abdullah put his contacts, feel free to contact him. That would be great. Or most of these talks are recorded and they will be archived in the Saudi MRI YouTube channel, which means if you are in a doubt, you could go to any one of the talks and just throw your questions, right? You could, inshallah, Abdullah's talk gonna be added to that channel. So it will be archived, it will be uh, hopefully watched by juniors, seniors. And I've seen one of my, maybe maybe this is the right person, uh, brother Ahmed Joanna. He did mention, this is kind of a classical talk by Abdullah, which is good, but Brother Ahmed and any, anybody who feels that we need to talk about advanced topics. Hence, I, I did mention, for example, the artificial intelligence initially. I did speak about it, whether AI is in the field. I know it's within all radiology modalities. So anyone who feels that they can add to what Abdullah just told us tonight, please feel free to go ahead and let us know. Uh, this platform is for all of us, right? We exchange ideas, knowledge, skills. So don't hesitate to just put your hand up and say, yeah, I want to talk about X topic and all what we are going to say, yeah, please welcome. So inshallah, see you guys next time with another awesome activity and stay safe. Shukran lakum. As-salamu.